Okay. All right, we are live. And so today, uh, investor Patrick Donahue, co-founder of Investor, along with Phil Pogge. Uh Phil is uh, working off-site today. And uh, we are going to be talking about Twitter for business and the opportunity to utilize short-form communication. Big focus is on Twitter in that space, but short-form communications to grow your business and on how it can be influential to bring capital into your business. So with that being said, uh, Phil, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Phil Pogge. I'm the co-founder of Investor, as Patrick said. Uh, my background is corporate finance, project finance. And uh, working with Patrick is the fourth startup or entrepreneurial venture that I have been part of. Uh, two years ago, I thought Twitter was kind of ridiculous, didn't really understand what its purpose was. And today, it is a significant piece of how I gain knowledge and, um, and communicate with other people. Right, and, and that's what's been really interesting in, in my career, my, my journey. Um, in finance is, you know, we grew up in a very traditional setting in the world of finance about how you communicate with people, um, very formal, especially when you're jumping on planes and going to New York City and Silicon Valley and elsewhere, and to have the opportunity to now really rethink about what communications look like in the world of uh, digital media and social media, broadly speaking, but specifically how to utilize short-form communications for the purposes of building a business uh, really changes the paradigm for a lot of businesses and especially for Phil and I in the world of, of finance. So um, and speaking of finance, I'm on the trading floor of the Minneapolis Grain Exchange, downtown Minneapolis, where Investor calls home and it's uh, um, now a co-working space and so uh, Investor and probably about 40 or 50 other companies are on the, on the trading floor. And uh, it's awfully fun to be here because in our world, many times we'll have people that used to be former traders, uh, CFOs, or financial types that uh, worked with either trading on the floor or had clients that were trading on the floor. So it's fun to see the evolution of our world of financial services, if you will, <laughs> and a lot more changes to come. So, Phil, one of the things I wanted to, to chat with is... Uh, chat with you about today was one of the things uh, we're going to probably have some guests today uh, from Monkey Island. They have several companies that are focused on products around Twitter, so we can get in depth with them uh, about the utilization of those tools. But one of the things that I was curious about is um, you worked on the corporate side, corporate finance, over your entire career, and wanted to kind of get your take on how you thought about communications, uh, you know. 10 years ago, even five years ago, and what you see communications like today, uh, and then specifically its impact in the world of finance. Sure. You know, I think 10 years ago, and, and let's kind of focus on that time period, communicating with people was still relatively expensive, especially if you were thinking about it in terms of communicating with an investor um, or even talking to an intermediary, which, you know, 10 years ago was, was pretty important to our capital markets. So, you know, in order to, to go and have a meeting with an investor, typically you'd have to, you know, prepare for a couple of weeks by putting together a pitch deck that had to be absolutely flawless. You'd go get on a plane and, um, you know, go to an investment bank's office and uh, sit down and talk with an investor. And, uh, um, you know, and, and the, you have hotel rooms for your team and trap and travel costs and and it ends up being a, a it was pretty expensive to communicate with people and today that a lot of that expense has gone away you know still um, having the chance to eventually have a face-to-face -face meeting I think is important but in the in the short term it's uh, you know it's it's pretty valuable to be able to go open dialogues and exchange thoughts and quickly filter who is or who is not you know, a good candidate for, um, you know, who, sh who should be a partner or who should be an investor in your company, um, you know, that's, that's, that's really important um, and saves a huge amount of not only time but also amount of dollars. But when you think about that of, you know, quickly filtering who is a, who is a good candidate that you should be partnered with, I think Twitter is a great form to, 
um, to use as a filter that you know if you when you've targeted a group of people that you think should be investors or you think should know more about your company um, and then you start to follow them on Twitter and see what are they tweeting um, especially if it's related to articles that they're reading um, or conversations that they've had with other people in your space it's a really good way to go and gain knowledge uh, very quickly and and for a very low cost to um, you know really see if somebody is a fit that you know just because their their title says they they are um, seeing what they what they've actually um, you know what they're thinking about the world will help them see if, if they're a match for your company yeah definitely and uh, I was a little bit off topic here Phil but I, I forgot to share with you there's a good article from uh, I think the New York Times that uh, pointed out the investment bankers that are vying to try to take Twitter public um, don't even have Twitter accounts and that's how um, you know the world of finance it's just you know very stereotypical where uh, they have very little familiarity with uh, the tool itself and so forth and here they're going to be responsible for what would be a very very large initial public offering um, of, of stock and so uh, there's a lot of irony that uh, the, the world of finance is still very behind the times in terms of communications and techniques and the ability to get directly in front of the people that uh, need to have their their advice and their insights uh, they're mm -hmm. still very much behind uh, closed walls or closed doors um, yeah and, and that's where that's where I grew up is you know you, you had to go to a compliance officer before you even wrote a letter to somebody uh, you know it's quite uh, in many ways quite ridiculous and you were gonna say something Phil or yeah I uh, um, you know sitting on the other side of the table from the investment bankers that you know the effort we would make in order to go open up conversations would be pretty substantial that you know without having a reputation built with them you know it, you may or may not get your phone call answered depending on how busy they were um, and you know really the, the better the reputation you have if they were in a meeting the, the sooner you would get a, a call back and uh, you know just the emails and the other forms of communication they it just took time and effort and you know you you regularly have your entire deal team you know review an email or reveal review a letter um, whereas uh, you know today you know you, you can only you can only do so much damage in a in a short tweet so right and the you know the big thing for for our small business owners and entrepreneurs is that you you can't afford to have the legions of people, attorneys, compliance officers, and people that are you know hanging over your shoulder and making everything is perfectly done. Uh, of course, the larger an organization gets to be, uh, the more financial sense that can make. But for us entrepreneurs and small business owners, we need to utilize short form, long form communications wherever possible because our biggest risk is not getting enough eyeballs versus potentially you know violating some issue or having some commu communication misinterpreted and that's a big thing that we like to help people understand that the entrepreneurs can't afford to be afraid of tools like Twitter and LinkedIn and other platforms it needs to be really embraced and people need to figure out how to best utilize it because they are the best marketing formats for most of us small business owners mm -hmm. yeah I completely agree with you and one of the things that you know when I first came across Twitter you know, I was not understanding why people were enamored with the short form communications that were made public and and so when I first set up my account and start playing around with it the one thing that I found most intriguing about it is that you get real-time information from people and you get insights that you're not going to get elsewhere and you start to realize how much even just broader media is filtered and so it's very powerful when there's world events going on to hear from the people who are out in the streets whether it's you know the uprisings or natural disasters to hear what's actually going on out there and what's going on and why um, you know why things are being framed the way they are 
and I remember, you know, when uh, Osama bin Laden was was killed. I think that broke on Twitter 20 minutes before CNN announced it, and a good half hour before uh, the president of the United States came online to tell the world. And so that was a very eye-opening experience for me. And in the world of finance, uh, time is definitely money. And I don't think Twitter has been really embraced all that much in the world of stock trading and so forth. I know there's some high-frequency trades that are placed off of sentiment off of Twitter, but absent that, not much is still being really utilized in the world of finance to embrace the, the power of these communication tools. And that's where entrepreneurs today can have a big competitive advantage. Yeah, you know, and there's, and there's really two sides to Twitter. There's uh, not only, um, you know, seeing what other people are, are seeing, but there's also contributing to the conversation. That uh, you know, Twitter is a great platform to to be able to um, you know demonstrate to other people that you are a thought leader and that you know something about your space. Be it not only what you um, you know the text that you put into your tweet, but also you have the ability to link to articles or um, other you know digital spots on the web to you know go go further the thoughts that uh, you know that are that are guiding what you're thinking right and it's a it's a fabulous tool to to build and expose reputation and you know for for us entrepreneurs it's a great way to start to build a social profile it's quick and easy uh, when you're out there you know sending tweets or or you know reposting articles of interest it's starting to build a mosaic to have uh, the public, other people really see who you are as an individual, what you're passionate about, because it's two things that move money in business, emotion and trust. And utilized appropriately, Twitter can really help with, with that piece. You know, people can understand who you are as an individual, see that passion, have that emotional hook, and thus also build trust in who you are and what your business is all about. And so, it's a it's a fabulous tool for the the irony, but a fabulous tool for for fundraising, mm -hmm. because you know for for many small business owners, entrepreneurs, whether it's getting getting a loan or or uh, bringing in seed capital into their business, uh, today it's more important than ever that somebody can do due diligence on you and your company and be able to understand who you are and why you're doing what you're doing and to be able to make money move quicker than it's been able to do in the past. Right. You know, and that and that goes back to what we were talking about just a couple of minutes ago with the regulatory limitations that um, investment banks have and, and other um, uh, entities that are that are um, regulated by the SEC or FINRA that they don't have the ability to um, send tweets because they're um, be, because they they because of the compliance um, uh, cost associated with it, and you know this really comes back once again to you, the you, the entrepreneur, you, the small business owner. You need to do this on your own. You need to go build your own reputation and go find the people who are the right people for you know partnering with for your company. Be it not only investors, um, but also um, you know joint ventures and partnerships, and even customers. Right. Yeah, very much so. And, and going back to the other side of the equation, as a tool to find investors and to identify people that could be potential business partners, uh, it's a fabulous tool because it allows you to go out there and see who these people are and to get personal insights. And the, the nice thing about some of the short-form communications, when you've got things like LinkedIn that's a little more um, <clears throat> thought through in terms of like what they want to post on their bios and so forth, but when you're utilizing things like um, a Facebook or a Twitter or even Google Plus, you know, some of this that's better able to capture um, things in the moment and help people understand who you are as an individual. That can be extremely powerful because most of us business owners need to be in a situation where we're building relationships, and the only way to really build a relationship is to be able to have some inside knowledge of who that person is, what interests them. What are they looking for? And that helps uh, 
open and engage in long-term dialogues, and that's what partnerships are built around, and that's where money can move in business. Exactly. Phil, what has been, you know, over the last, you know, two years or so as we've been, you know, building out our educational materials and working with uh, you know, quite a few companies, um, what, are, what is a story or two that comes to mind in terms of people utilizing Twitter to achieve objectives? Does, does anything pop to mind? You know, I think one of my favorite stories is uh, um, how you can use lists on Twitter. Okay. Um, and uh, so as soon as I said this, you know exactly who I was going to talk about. Right. Um, so one of, one of our, our clients is a rather bold entrepreneur. And uh, when, you, when you build it, you can build lists on Twitter, which is ways to sort and keep track of different people that you're following. And when someone gets put on a list, uh, there's a notification that is sent to them. Um, so this uh, entrepreneur who was fundraising um, built a list of people that need to know me. And um, <laughs> and, I, and I got put on that list, and it, it made me laugh um, when I got a notification that uh, I, I was on a list of people that need to know me. And, and it's, you know, it's, you're, you're taking away some of the subtlety there of you know being coy and uh, you know now now you're you know now now you should have somebody's attention um, you know there's so I think that's that's one of the uh, um, uh, examples that really stands out about how somebody used Twitter to uh, to go reach out and and um, you know start conversations with people um, you know but there's there's quite a few others. Um, you want to add anything to that story or, or give another yeah, example? Yeah, I, I always think of the one of, uh, of Josh, who actually might join us today. He was going to be at, uh, at a lunch meeting to see if he could join us for the last few minutes. But uh, one of my favorite stories is from Josh when he was, uh, um, they were out there, you know, talking to, to new partners, potential investors. And, you know, he found a gentleman in uh, Chicago that um, he wanted to get in front of a meet. And, he, you know, he just called him up out in a tweet and got a tweet back and you know an hour later they were on the phone and having a good conversation and that person ended up introducing him to several potential investors that uh, that Josh was able to to go and present to and that's what's really neat because some people like to argue with our viewpoint that real investors want to be found and and the reality is is real investors do want to be found and there's a lot of people in our entrepreneurial community that are very willing to help out you know fellow entrepreneurs get in front of the right people and that's where I think Phil we've seen the best traction of anybody in the fundraising process is really when they've utilized their uh, entrepreneurial network you know of, mm -hmm. of fellow peers fellow founders that share um, business insights and then specifically you know if they're in the fundraising mode insights on potential investors and what people are hearing and and how best to you know approach certain investors and that's where uh, the people we've worked with have gotten the best traction it's never yeah. it's never due to a lack of the number of people to find there's no shortage of investors but it's it's really leveraging their network to to find out you know how best to get in front of people. Absolutely, you know, and, and it's really it it doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be an invasive um, process. You know, there's a um, I can think of a conversation that or dialogue I had with a uh, uh, with an individual who you know if we were to ever go um, do fundraising, he'd probably be a very good fit. Um, and it was uh, he had written a blog post, and I uh, commented. By a tw uh, by a Twitter about um, some of the ideas that he had in there, and you know we had a we had probably ten tweets that went back and forth, and you know we didn't necessarily agree that each other had the perfect answer, um, but it, but it was a really interesting way of uh, sharing thoughts, um, such that you know later points. Um, you know, he'll he'll write something, and I'll I'll tweet it out as you know this is worth paying attention to, um, and uh, you know so it's it's one of those things that where you know if it's ever time for me to go pick up the phone, um, now you know we there's already a little bit of relationship there, 
and by being able to reference this, uh, it would, uh, you know, now we've now we've accelerated it. He can go back and, uh, um, you know, look through the the Twitter archive and and kind of see, uh, you know, what we were talking about. Yeah, and I've, I think there's a lot of people that ha are not on or haven't used Twitter yet that just are in disbelief of the the whole idea that you could be posting public short messages and actually engaging in dialogues with complete strangers, especially people who are highly influential. And it's amazing how sometimes the more influential people are or the um, the bigger audience they have. I mean, I think of like Dave McClure, who's prolific on Twitter, um, and there's, there's several other people like him, uh, VCs that are on Twitter, uh, that are very engaging online. And yeah. it's actually a fabulous way because then when you bump into somebody like this at a conference or um, or if you have the opportunity to meet them in person someday, it's going to make everything all that much easier. You know, just knowing a name or a face or a little bit of background is all that much easier um, to make things happen. Yeah, um, I, would, I, would, I would... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, you know, I, to that list, I would add somebody like Dan Primack, who's a journalist, that right. he's uh, tremendously engaged in, in the Twitter community, that... Um, it gives him a platform to not only share what he's, um, you know, interviews that he's had with people and um, links to content that he's written, but it also um, is a way for him to collect knowledge and, you know, um, get insights and, and put color around things that he's thinking about um, or, you know, articles or, or topics that are, are really important to him. Yeah, and, and what's and I don't know if you mentioned this, but Dan Primax, the the editor of uh, PE Hub, uh, or was the editor of PE Hub, and now he's at Fortune Magazine, or vice versa. But uh, Dan's very influential in the the deal world. And what I love about um, you know following his tweets and several other people like him is you get a ton of inside baseball. You get a ton of insights when he's meeting with people or he's building some thoughts around an article that you're not you're going to get unfiltered. You know, when you read the article, you can tell where somebody maybe filtered out certain thoughts, but when you can read their interview notes real-time live, um, <laughs> that's uh, that's been pretty fun. And so, you know, when we work with companies or companies that are looking for acquisitions or maybe need to uh, or want to sell their business, that's where Twitter and some of these tools can be really fun because you really need to be engaged in what's happening in your industry, who's selling for what and why, and it's all about context. I mean, just seeing that a business sold for 50, 100 million dollars doesn't tell you much. You know, just because they got 3x revenue doesn't mean your company's going to get that type of a multiple. And so you, with the more context you get to what actually drove that valuation, that's invaluable. Um, and that's where a lot of Wall Street banks have been able to charge, you know, 3, 5 percent um, fees to be able to to pull off a, a sale of a business or an acquisition, uh, but there's so many things that business owners can do now to own and control some of that inside baseball knowledge themselves. Yeah, I um, agree. We're getting we're we're getting uh, at a minute 25, and I know I keep getting flagged down from from Jason that we've got some questions building up, and so um, I don't know, if Jason, if you want to, just shoot me a text. Okay, so part of me, but we're gonna use fancy online communications um, and just look at this. So, so um, Frank, Frank says, can you give us some traits of an investor on Twitter and who would want to reach out to? Uh, doesn't make sense to DM Warren Buffett with only two tweets. So Frank wants to know, you know, what are the traits of investors on Twitter who we'd want to reach out to? Um, and kind of pointing out, you know, am I really going to get in front of Warren Buffett on Twitter? Well, I, I think Uncle Warren is probably not going to be a great fit. Um, but I would, uh, you know, I, I think that when you're when you go look at someone's profile, you can see how often they tweet, and you know if they tweet, you know, once a quarter or, um, you know, or so, there that's probably they're, they're probably not checking this with enough regularity to um, to go and enter into a conversation that's um, uh, going to be meaningful. Whereas if somebody you know regularly tweets a few times a week um, to more than that, 
yeah, that's this is probably a great platform to go engage them. Right. Yeah, and and it's actually really easy to find out who are the you know who's who's uh, an active you uh, a user of social media on any platform. I mean, if you're looking for seed investors, like uh, many entrepreneurs do at some stage of their growth, you go to things like AngelList and go to their <clears throat> go to their Twitter account for AngelList. And uh, who do you think AngelList follows? Well, they follow all the investors that are on their platform, and on top of it, they have a list of uh, I don't know. The last time I checked, it was I don't know 700 or 1,000 investors. They put them all right on a list. So you can quickly kind of go through and see who's active on Twitter and who's not. And at the end of the day, it surely doesn't hurt to, you know, to follow and hear what they're saying, um, even if they're not heavy utilizers. But um, the, the types of traits you're looking for are people that are, that are engaged and engaging. And at the end of the day, real investors, they're engaged somewhere online. Uh, for some of them, it's Twitter. Uh, for some of them, they're going to, you know, probably be more active on like a LinkedIn or a Facebook um, and some of them are going to be you know just more utilization of email or going out to events or whatever the case may be so you just need to be able to identify what are some of the best ways to be able to get in front of people and the beautiful thing about Twitter is it costs you really nothing and in terms of time or money to be able to attempt to engage in dialogue or to call some people out and see if you can't get a conversation going, it's sure a heck of a lot better than uh, <laughs> than um, you know flying to a conference with the hopes that you might get in front of somebody. At least that on the front end you could you know try to engage somebody with uh, with email and Twitter and some other forms of communications ahead of time. Yeah, you know I'd say the I'd say the biggest downside to Twitter is that it can be kind of addicting and it'll take away more time than you have. Well, I, th I think I think as your as your as your wife likes to say, Phil, you consume too much content, and so it doesn't matter if it's if it's Twitter, or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> so I, I know I got waved down here. So this is uh, um, I got another question here. Um, when I'm on when I'm on Twitter, is there a way to easily um, let people know of ways that, um, well, not ways, is there ways to help them understand that I am looking for funding or I'm looking to open up a dialogue about potentially being involved with our company? And uh, a couple things come to mind with this question. Um, a really fabulous way to get some people involved um, is through an advisory board. So if you don't have an advisory board, um, the act of uh, attempting to assemble one is a great way to reach out to people and to say, hey, here's a link to our website and a, maybe a secret link to uh, an overview on our advisory board as a way to get some information to somebody to say, hey, we'd love to open up a dialogue and see if this could be a fit for you. And that can be a natural conversation to the goals and objectives of the company and what you're looking to do. And then the other trick is to let people know um, when you're on Twitter, you can actively let people know that you are on on AngelList and Gust. And when somebody has a profile on AngelList and Gust, uh, they're fundraising, or they're probably thinking of fundraising. And so those are really nice tools to be able to utilize and then be able to send out the links to people to say, hey, this more information is about uh, my company and myself and my team. Check it out here. And it's a great way to kind of flag people without breaking securities laws or having other issues of just blatantly posting that uh, that you're looking for capital. Yeah, you know, we should, and we should... Some thoughts? Yeah, we should, we should cover that, uh, the securities laws component for just uh, a minute um, to help keep people out of trouble. Oh, don't then, focus on this way, so. <laughs> Well, it's it's you know you you can't blatantly post that we're looking for money, um, right. that you're that that is a violation of security laws. Um, but as as Patrick said, he just gave you about three or four tips mm -hmm. right there. You know, you can go post a you can go post that you are um, on Angel List. You can go post that you're on Gust. You can go um, uh, if you you know if you're certified for a tax credit um, for angel investment. These are these are great ways to go indicate to the world that you are, um, you know, 
that you're out there, you're raising money, and um, you know, but you haven't you haven't said you're raising money. Yeah, that, that, there's so much irony, especially with the angel tax credits that you can't publicly post on your website or elsewhere that you're raising funds, but then here, like we're in the state of Minnesota, the state of Minnesota will actively put on their website that these companies are certified for the angel tax credit. Um, so might as well have like a glaring banner that, you know, ABC company is actively looking for money. Um, so it's just, it's just ironic about how dated our securities laws are, which we can't change, we can hardly even influence, but uh, we can definitely help people understand how to navigate it. Exactly. Well, we're at so, 1.30. Uh, is there any yep. additional questions that are looming, or how do you how do you like to proceed, Patrick? I don't have any. I don't have any further questions. I'm looking towards Jason to see if we had any other questions come up. Oh, we he did said I should be paying more attention. Um, um, okay, Rory from Rhode Island is uh, um, making an at message, so uh, I believe an at message would be the same as a direct message to an investor. Um, oh, an at message, oh, yep, so an at reply to an investor saying I'm fundraising, is that allowed within SEC laws? So, and actually I'm bringing up two different things there, so, so if... <clears throat> Um, so an at message or an at reply where everybody could see it, it would be publicly posted on your Twitter stream as saying that you're fundraising. That's where you've got issues because that's a public statement. It's no different than if you put it on your website or put an advertisement in a, in a newspaper um, when you're a publicly a stating that you're board. raising money. A bulletin board, <laughs> it doesn't matter where it's at, but if you're publicly stating that you're raising money, that's where you're going to run into to issues. If it's a direct message in somebody you've got a relationship with and somebody that you've already have known and engaged in dialogue with, so let's just say um, you've met uh, you've met uh, a couple investors in Silicon Valley and you're now on Twitter and stuff like that and your community came back and forth. If you send a direct message to them, no different than you'd send them a text or an email, and you already know them saying, hey, we're looking at raising capital, and boom, 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 and uh, or here's some information, that would be completely fine. It's, it's the, the test is really um, that pre-existing relationship, and I start to hesitate and I start laughing because the SEC has never defined really what a pre-existing relationship really is. There's been some case law that has somewhat defined what that is, but... Um, just leave it up to uh, to people to interpret for themselves. But if you, if you've already talked to somebody and you know each other, obviously the the more you know each other, the longer the relationship, the better off you're going to be. Um, when it comes to you know, you're never going to get in trouble real time if something happens and somebody goes back and audits it and says you know a year later, oh you sent a uh, a message to somebody, did you really know them? You know what kind of proof do you have? Well. You know, I've got all these emails, and I met them on this trip, and all that kind of stuff. Then, sure, that won't be a problem. That'd be really easy. So that's the thing to keep in mind when you've got pre-existing relationships. Um, how how could you document to show somebody someday? If the SEC did ever ask, you know, how did you have pre-existing relationships? That's where it can be very helpful to have all those pieces in place. Which, by the way, is why we love social media and digital media. If you've been linked in with somebody, you've, you've got now a digital record of when you met and first engaged in dialogue and, and you've gotten to know somebody. Um, so the more things like that that you can have in your quiver, the better off you'll be in the fundraising journey. Yeah. So, so let's, let's wrap up with one last thing that's the, uh, um, you, okay, you okay over there? Getting a lot of background noise. Well, no, I, I, I'm getting plagued that we keep getting more questions coming in. So let me just look through these real quick. I want to wrap up, but um, okay. Well, let me let me. Uh, oh yeah. One. Oh, so so okay. Yeah, go ahead, Phil. We'll, we'll just wrap up. Okay, but well, we'll wrap up and we'll save this for another episode. It's a great idea. Well, our people can people can get our course, which we've made for free. Hey. On, uh, on Udemy. Free. Hey, the whole the whole course is free. The uh, 
Um, utilizing Twitter for business and for fundraising is free on, on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com, Udemy. Uh, go to investor.com. You can also get the link to the course there. Uh, so these are some of our shorter courses that are normally retailing for $15, but uh, we made this one free so we can uh, get some feedback on it. And i uh, love you to sign up and check it out and let us know what you think of it. So Very good. Well, thank you for your time. We'll answer everyone. more questions there. Um, yeah, and, and so let's, I'll just leave it with this. You know, uh, give a challenge to everybody uh, that was on today. Um, if you're not on Twitter, one, go be on Twitter. But number two, um, you, you're probably already familiar with Twitter if you were hanging out with us today on online. But here's the challenge. Go out and uh, tweet out at least one investor in the next few hours and uh, see what happens. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Go share a piece of information or something that could capture their minds and attention. And uh, give it a shot. See what happens. Uh, you really can't hurt yourself. That's our parting challenge. So anything keep else, the, Keep fighting the good fight, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow, Patrick. Okay, sounds good, Phil. Have a good day.